Are you ready for the hook of the week? Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. This week, I thought I would look at a hat hook for maybe your nicer hats. Just a regular hook that kind of comes to a sharp end might be damaging to some hats. So I'm gonna make a hook that is kind of more like this that the hat sits on and the brim can kind of go around it. I've seen hooks like this done with kind of a ring that fits just right inside the crown of the hat. I've seen some that the ring is bigger and the hat goes upside down so that it's supported by the rim of the hat. Lots of options, but this one's gonna be a flat, really kind of shaped like this. And for that, I'm gonna start with this piece of quarter by one and a quarter. And it looks like it's about 10 and a half inches long. And I don't know if we'll use all of it. I might end up cutting some of it off if it starts to look too big, but we'll see what we end up with. So it's about six millimeter by 30, 31 millimeters, something like that, and 265 millimeters long. Now to do this, I'm gonna leave a mass that's gonna form that pad for the hat to sit on. I'm going to draw out a neck, and then I'm gonna leave another mass that's gonna form the part that hooks on the wall, and then we'll curve it and make it look nice, and maybe do some decorative chisel work up here on the top. So without further delay, let's get our material hot and let's make a hook. And I think I'm gonna start just by fullering in the transition points here. You know, just making a wild guess on how much to leave. Somebody's gonna to wanna to know what that wild guess was though. So I'm fullering that at about two and a half inches. So that's about 60 millimeters or so. I don't want to make this too thin, so I'm just about where I need to be, I think. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Then I'll just come to the edge of the anvil and start drawing that out. I'm also going to knock the corners of this off while I'm here. No reason to have sharp pointy corners. That would be bad for your hat as well. We'll probably do some filing or grinding to clean that up. And as always, drawing out over the horn is pretty efficient. Typically I would fuller my second point here, but I'm not sure how much I want to leave till I get some of this drawn out. Then I'll make an educated guess and finish this up. I think by the time I draw that out more, I want my next fuller right in here. I do turn this up and put a little bit of a bevel in there just to keep it from being a sharp corner. You know, even just this shape has some real interest to it. I'm not sure what for. I don't think I'm going to leave it for the hook, but it's just kind of interesting there.
This ends up fairly thick and while I want it heavy, I don't see any reason for the middle to be thicker than the spot at the ends where I fullered in, or at least not significantly so. You could draw this out and round it up, make it round, or octagon if you wanted to. I'm going to leave it flat. At this point, I'm just trying to get this evened up, make it all the same width and the same thickness. And knock the corners down as I go. It's still considerably thicker through there. You can certainly keep working this at the anvil. A couple more heats would probably get it. But in the interest of saving a little bit of time, I think I'll just real quickly run that under the power hammer. And just like working by hand, if you work that down into a black heat, you can get most of the scale off of it and leave a much smoother finish. No real forging at that point, it's just smoothing and taking out the high spots. All right, I think the next thing we want to do is finish this end. To do that, I'm going to thin it out and make it a little bit wider. I'm not trying for a perfect round, but kind of an oval shape here. And if you were making a spoon, you could thin it out more and make a spoon or a ladle. Keep it rectangular, you can make a spatula. And you get the idea what I'm going for there. Just clean that up a little bit the next heat. Now this would be a good time to go file or grind if you need to. Really, I'm pretty happy with the shape, so I don't think I'm going to do anything there. The next thing I want to do is I want to kind of dish that so that it cups the hat from below. And I think looking at the 
way this is going, I'm going to dish it from this side and this will be the, the top just because it kind of offset to that side. I think just a rounding hammer and a stump would be sufficient. That should provide a nice domed surface for your hat to sit on. This will get bent down and around as we finish the hook. But now I'm going to go on and do the other end. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this shorter. I think that's just more than I want for a wall mount. Perhaps a little longer than the other pad. I'm going to start cutting it this way, partially because this is about the maximum width I can cut in this tool, but also because I find it easier sometimes to get a nice clean cut if I cut all directions. That does leave me with a nice clean cut. And this is going to be the top surface. And I'm not trying to round this up. These are just going to be little bevels. And I may come back and file that in a little bit more thoroughly. And that's a little bit off there, and that's something else I'll probably just clean up with a file or a grinder. When I say file, sometimes I mean if you don't have a grinder, you can use a file. But if you have a grinder, I don't consider that there's any shame in using that most of the time. Not always the right tool, though. I think files are essential. So let's put a little chiseled in X in there. And when I usually do that kind of a pattern, I usually put center punch marks inside each of the triangles. But this time I'm gonna drill those out and I'm gonna put round head screws in. And that will be part of the decorative element is those round head screws. This is not holding very well at all. I think my hold fast is starting to rebel. Bet you can heat those up and rebend them and kind of get them back into better condition there, I think. All right, no. I'm just doing this by eye. You could certainly let it cool and lay it out with a square or ruler and then start it cold and then get it hot and finish it. But sometimes that little lack of perfection really adds to the look, I think, within reason. It can get get overdone and become sloppy instead of just being character. So that's that, and then we'll drill the holes. So now we need to bend this up. This part goes flat on the wall, and that's going to come down a little bit and then start to bend. Now I've cooled that top section so that it doesn't want to bend, because there's no reason for it to. And I'm just going to start this around this big piece of pipe. And we'll put the other end in and bend it. I'll probably bend it back in here somewhere. Gotta clean up that first bend in the jig so it has a nice transition. You 
can just use this to kind of offset that. I think that looks pretty good. It's a little bit crooked. If you need to, put it in the vise and use a bending fork or something. That's pretty good though, and that's kind of what I'm after. That sticks out far enough from the wall that your hat brim's not going to rub up here. The next thing we want to do is go ahead and drill those holes and give it a good waxing and a little bit of filing. And it'll be a hook, but I'm going to let it cool first. Nice bell. It didn't take too long to finish those last little details real quick off camera. And we now have a finished hook to hang your hat on. I think it's got a nice shape to it. It's got a nice smooth pad to, to hang the hat on. A little bit of decorative file work there. And if you add color matched round head screws, they sort of give the impression of rivets. And you could certainly use square headed nails if you wanted to, but I think that's a real good look right there to have those screws in there. And they're probably a little stronger than nails. But if you want to forge nails for hooks like this, I think that's completely acceptable. Just make sure that something like this is going into a good solid framing because you're putting an awful lot of holes if you're just sticking it in drywall. And if it ever tears out, it's liable to tear out a great big hole. For me, I think I'm going to put this on the wall of the log house and there's plenty of material there to hold this. So in use, this just holds your hat like that, and it keeps it out of trouble, and it doesn't put as much stress on the back of your hat, although you could certainly hang it that way, and it's still not a sharp point. So I think it, one way or the other, this is a better hook for a nicer hat. Not that this one's that nice. I found that in an antique store, but I kind of liked it. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.